Welcome back. I would like to talk about neural networks. For this, before I dive into the neural networks, I need to show you uh, several things that is uh, that will be also needed for our neural network uh, adaptive control formulation. <clears throat> All right, let me begin. So in the previous lectures, we developed model reference adaptive control laws to suppress the effect of structured uncertainties. I will first explain what, what I mean by structured uncertainties, and then um, I will talk about unstructured uncertainties where we will need neural networks for unstructured case. All right, I mentioned in the previous videos, uh, basically we developed a model reference adaptive control for unstructured uncertainties. If you remember, I consider this scalar system before we dive into higher order stuff. So here, as you see, unknown weight multiplies our state. So basically this is the structured uncertainty. We know how uncertain terms multiplies, uh, basically enters to our dynamical system. As this being said, we can easily generalize our results to other classes of structured uncertainties. For example, instead, instead of having this form, um, the adaptive control laws that we developed in the previous uh, lectures, we can easily apply to this form. So here, basically, here is the um, uncertainty, in this case, P by one vector, and this is a known basis function, which is also a P uh, dimensional vector. Now, I would like to talk about these details, but first I would like to motivate you um, about this new vector, vector form structured uncertainties. By the way, uh, in some books and reports, structured uncertainties are, are also called as parametric uncertainties. Um, I am just writing it here just to let you know about this. All right, so consider this simple uh, mass going through a road subject to friction. Um, <coughs> this is the velocity of the car. This is the um, control signal applied to this. Um, card system and we know from Newton's second law MA which in this case velocity is derivative equals to control signal that we apply minus the friction coming from the rod that affects negatively um, let's assume mass is one kilograms okay and let's say friction has this structure that you don't know W1 is uh, related with the velocity of the cart and W2 um, velocity to the power of 3 and uh, most of the time uh, friction enters to dynamics like this you know it depends on the velocity and sometimes third um, power of the velocity but depending on the changes on the road if you are going to a rough surface or a uh, different surface these W parameters are generally unknown so when you insert this friction into the dynamical system then you can write like v dot equals to this w1 w2 unknown weights multiplied by minus v minus coming from here and minus v to the power of three so here we, we know the structure of the uncertainty in the sense that we know how it depends on our states so that we know this basis function but we don't know the weights and then we use adaptive control laws to cancel the effect basically to cancel the effect of this um, total uncertainty and in this case this is what i mean by structured or parametric uncertainty basically you know the basis function you just don't know the weights uh, that can change depending on the changes in the road so on and so forth and um, you are going to see that this formulation also captures disturbances. For example, um, if you, in this basis function, let's say you also have um, a disturbance term here, 
then you can include your disturbance term to here and you add a basis function, unity, ba unity basis element of one. In this case, this will be, you know, one, three by one and this will have three entries, unknown disturbance also here, if you also have a disturbance here. So by adding a bias, unity bias of one to your basis function, this also captures disturbances. And moving forward, basically this is nonlinear and the assumption that we have it needs to be piecewise continuous state of x um, let's remember what i what we mean by piecewise continuous a function that has finite number of breaks for example like this right let's say as a function of time and does not blow up to infinity anywhere for example, you cannot include one of x to your basis function if your answer depends on this, because if you pass through zero, then it becomes infinity, then your basis function becomes infinity and your adaptive control law to be designed will be not implementable. All right, so to wrap up, this is the structured uncertainty. Now, briefly, I would like to discuss how our previous control laws handles what changes we need to make to handle this vector form of the uncertainties instead of this uh, simple one. I mentioned it in previous videos, like we are going to learn step by step, so we are uh, making a nice uh, progress. All right, previously we were just having w hat here, but now since this is vector, I need to put a vector here. So I put transpose motivated by this. We are estimating it. Here is the learning law. In this case, w hat is also, you know, p dimensional vector because this is p by one, this is one by one. This is a model reference adaptive control scheme. So here is the um, reference model similar to. So the only changes we make as compared to previous laws is this and this. Previously, we just had X here and we didn't have transpose. All right. Um, the main important part of this video is neural networks, but I need to make sure be before I use it for unstructured uncertainties, I need to make sure you understand first the structured uncertainties. Now I am going to perform a similar Lipono analysis. This is the error. This is a W tilde. You can write the error dynamics like this and W tilde like this. Here is the um, theta basis function known in this case for structured uncertainties, W tilde uh, transpose pops up. I am going to use the almost similar Lipono function candidate. The only difference as compared to previous videos is we have transpose here. When you take its time derivative and insert e dot and w tilde, you are going to arrive this. I am not going to dive into the detail because it is pretty similar to previous videos. But if you didn't understand a step, uh, leave a comment in your comment. It's important that you mention the timestamp of this video in which execution and at which timestamp you don't understand. I can explain. So basically, these two terms will cancel out with each other. So you end up having this W dot equation. It is Lyapunov stable, meaning that error and W tilde are being bounded. Now, when you have this form, we are going to apply Barbalas lemma to make sure error going to zero. We compute V dot dot, which has this structure. I am inserting E dot. Um, Lyapunov stability means, right, again, V, E, W tilde bounded. So this is bounded, this is bounded, this is bounded. Is this bounded? Let's see. So first of all, theta of X is theta of um, E plus XR. I am just using this here. Error is bounded, XR is bounded. Now, since theta, um, since theta is piecewise continuous, it doesn't include such terms and enhance if XR and E bonded, then theta itself is bonded. So this is bonded. This is where we use piecewise uh, continuous continuity property of theta. Um, as I mentioned here, bonded since theta cannot have terms such as one over X, 
so that v dot that is bounded we know from barbalat lemma then v dot going to zero st goes to infinity and error goes to zero so we recover asymptotic convergence perfect so now um, i needed to uh, make this clear about structured uncertainties now at this point we can start talking about neural networks now the motivation is not every uncertainty is a structured uncertainty such that um, we sometimes cannot uh, write uncertainties like this with a known basis function, right? The road friction, for example. We can uh, do it, but for more complicated friction models, or for example, let's say turbulence models or complex aerodynamics when you fly a vehicle, it is almost impossible to you know, get a basis function. Basically, you don't know how your states affect uh, the uncertainties. So in this case, when you cannot write an uncertainty delta as W transpose multiplied by theta, known basis function, then uh, the stuff that we cannot write in this form are called unstructured, also called as non-parametric uncertainties. Um, they are harder since we cannot uh, parameterize them as structured uncertainties, but over the years, neural networks provide us a nice approximation of these uncertainties. All right, to make the long story short, <clears throat> we use neural networks to find an approximate structure to delta when this uncertainty is unstructured. I would like to step back for a second and talk about neural networks. So basically, if you don't know, a neural network um, is nothing but it consists of neurons and their connections. To visualize things, for example, a neural network structure like the one given in here, it takes some inputs in this in the context of adaptive control. These will be the states of the system. And then it will be distributed to the neurons and then it computes an output. output. So this is a basically an artificial feed-forward neural network structure. We have one hidden layer. You know, you can make it complex, you know, you can make it fancier. You may have other layers as well. When you have a um, bunch of hidden layers in the literature, it is called deep neural networks. And um, however, so I, you know, I would like to make a basic introduction to neural networks. Um, first of all, if the neural networks gets deep, um, it may be harder to prove, and sometimes for some neural network structures, we not uh, we uh, may not always have a provable structure. As always, the standard uh, what is standard in my videos, I am always going to show you what is provable, so that you can safely use adaptive control with elegant proofs uh, based on Lyapunov stability and more. All right, so. Um, these neurons basically include a nonlinear activation function. And we are going to use radial basis functions here. Why we uh, are going to use radial basis functions? Two things. First of all, they are widely adopted in industry and academia. And the reason for this, it is one of the very efficient provable uh, neural networks. Let's dive into more in detail. All right, so radial basis function, um, you can represent it in um, different mathematical forms. I like this form, it is smooth, basically e to the power of minus d1, x is your state, minus d2. For example, here is your state. Radial basis functions has this bell curved structure. They reach the maximum to one at d2 and um, D1, if you increase D1, it will make radial basis functions with narrower. For example, let's say I am increasing D1, then you are going to get a shape like this. Likewise, if you increase, if you decrease D1, you are going to have a more shape like this. This is when D1 is decreased, and this is when you increase. Uh, D1. 
All right. Now, one of the most important key moments of this video is the universal approximation theorem um, for radial basis function neural networks. Basically, um, radial basis function neural networks will have a single hidden, uh, basically, the following structure. Let me read, then make it clear. It will be very clear in a second. Let delta, your uncertainty, be continuous function. Then, this approximation holds over a compact set X belongs to D. Here, W is an unknown weight. Theta is a basis function with its entries, including radial basis functions. And epsilon is a residual approximation error that is bounded over this compact set D. Moreover, epsilon goes to zero as you increase more uh, neurons, radial basis functions to the theta by increasing its dimension. Great, and um, so the idea is then we use this in adaptive control and we do this approximation over a compact set D. Let's say um, you have a, you know, in this case you have a scalar system and let's say uh, you are operating that system over an interval, say, 5 to minus 5, then you need to include basically several basis functions to cover this area. This will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These will be basically, or theta will be uh, the first basis function, second basis function, all the way up to eight basis function. And this, you, if you increase the number of basis functions, basically including more, 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 then this universal approximation theorem says that this epsilon getting uh, smaller and smaller, smaller. If you want to cover this area, just let's say with one and two basis function, then your error will be large. So that's why, that's what this universal approximation theorem says. And the idea is to use, again, this structure. We are going to, since, you know, we cannot have a structured uncertainty in this case, we are going to construct theta based on radial basis functions. And of course, neural network is an approximation. We are going to have this um, error, uh, residual term. And remember that we are uh, no longer making a global stability analysis. X belongs to a compact set. So this means that stability will be valid when X stays in the compact set. And what happens if you, if state, you know, you basically goes outside um, this compact set? Well, in order not to make this happen, always make the large enough, arbitrarily large, at the expense of using even more neurons. You know, you basically, if you want to cover an area more than five to five, then start making that area larger by inserting more neurons. Or um, if you want to use l less neurons to cover a wide area, then uh, epsilon can be large. I am going to make these points uh, clear in the next video. And um, the main idea that what you should remember from this video, for structured uncertainties, we know theta. For unstructured uncertainties, we don't know. So basically, thanks to the universal approximation theorem for radial basis function neural networks, we can, for a given uncertainty delta, we can parameterize it like this, and W will be unknown. We are going to adapt for it. We recreated the basis using radial basis function neurons, and there will be a tolerance, there will be a residual that is coming from the approximation and our results will be semi-global, uh, they will hold over this compact set. All right, thanks for watching.